Okay. Very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome you all in the ISFCP dialogue series under MU activity in preparation with LM College of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad, Gujarat, India. Today's guest and speaker, Dr. Ketan Pran, M for PhD, working as an associate professor in head department of pharmaceutics, LM College of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Dr. Ketan has a cumulative experience of more than 19 years in teaching, training, and research in pharmaceutical field with one year of national experience and ran vaccine research at Burga. Dr. Ketan is an accomplished and dedicated teacher and trainer with a background that reflects the ability to engage and educate students of effective utilization knowledge, facilitate successful application from it. Dr. Titan employs teaching competencies to share new concepts in an industry and effective. Dr. Titan has a working experience in formation development of novel and delivery system doses form as a PhD scholar and as a researcher. Dr. Titan published more than 40 research publications in international and national journals with X index 21, I10, 27, and citation more than 12 years. Dr. Ketan has vast experience and had achievements in DST phase project 2018 at Malibu Pharmacy College with 60 lakhs from DST. Also, having project funded by Citocell functionalized gold drop particles for development of therapeutic plant, GSBTM, DST, UPS 27 and Magnum. So, I welcome Dr. Ketan in this platform, ISFCP, and request it to proceed further. Please, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for your kind introduction. So at the outset, I'm very much thankful to the principal, Dr. M.T. Chabaria, sir, LM College of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad, as well as uh, principal Dr. Gupta, sir, ISF College of Pharmacy, Moga, Punjab, to come up with such a quality initiative whereby uh, we have a dialogue series between the two colleges, uh, the two well-known colleges of the India, LM College of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad, and ISF College of Pharmacy. So to start on uh, this dialogue series, uh, we are going to have our first session on planning a productive design of experiment. So whereby, am I audible? Uh, is it fine? Mansi madam, just do let me know. Yes, yes, yeah. it is completely fine. So uh, both the institutions uh, had come up with such an excellent educational opportunity. So I welcome all of you on behalf of LM College of Pharmacy, the students who have joined from ISF College of Pharmacy, Moga, Punjab, as well as uh, some other students here who might have also joined from other institutions of Gujarat or India. So let us make the most from this webinar. I request all the attendees uh, to put yourself on mute mode. Uh, you can put up your questions into the chat box and which will be addressed afterward or at the end of the session. Uh, you may also send further questions uh, on my mail ID and presentation is posted on the YouTube page or on to the YouTube channel of both the institutions and which are over here as. Uh, uh, we expect that at, at the end of this session, participants will be able to learn, identify and solve the or formulate the strategy of experiments. You would be confidently building up the stepwise DOE process to quantify the variables and use the experimental data uh, to make the appropriate statistical interpretations and inferences, thereby uh, you would be very confidently planning uh, to design your experiment. Also, uh, you will be able to analyze and interpret the results, data and graph, what has been obtained out of the uh, designed and planned experiment. And uh, we will also uh, be confident and we will also learn to apply uh, these concepts of designing the experiment to all the experimental studies uh, which we are going to do in future for our research dissertations or for any of our research projects. Uh, the content that has been made available here is just for informational and educational purposes only. There are no intentions uh, to violate or infringe any of the copyright. And I duly acknowledge uh, the software design expert from whom some of the screenshots have been taken during my presentation. Uh, to begin with the contents of the uh, this particular webinar, we will first have uh, an overview of strategy of experimentation. What are the stepwise procedures for conducting 
the designed experiment how should we start planning uh, regarding designing of experiment we should start with expressing and defining up the objectives uh, estimating the responses uh, variable of our experiment how to check for the sample size or what would be the size of your design uh, how you will run and execute those uh, experimental test and runs and then how you will be analyzing your results using model terms residual analysis interpretation of results and confirming and verification of runs whether our predictions work or not so we'll start with planning uh, then execution then analyze and then verify and then again go back to the planning stage so uh, this is how we will be moving across uh, in our entire presentations so to begin with uh, the strategy of experimentation uh, now let me tell you how uh, why do we perform any experiment we perform any experiment to acquire the skills we perform our experiment to gain the knowledge we perform the experiment to develop a process or to design a new product or to develop a new methodology or as a part of completion of university examinations and dissertation projects as well now in any of the experiment uh, virtually in all the fields of uh, inquiry we try to discover something about a process or a system that process may be an analytical method that process may be a spray drying process that process may be a fluid as bad coating process uh, whereby you you change the atomization pressure of your nozzle you change the temperature of your auto cotter you change the drying temperature of your granule when you change each of these variables you are doing a separate experimental run or a test and why do you change the temperature you want to see how much your granules have dried or what is the moisture content remaining in my granule so at the end uh, it is a series of runs it is a series of experiment where you are deliberately changing the temperature deliberately changing the rpm deliberately changing the catalyst concentration to see what effects uh, what, how it will impact on yield of my chemical compound being synthesized uh, what would be the impurity level in my compound which is being synthesized or what would be the hardness of my tablet that I have compressed when I changed the compression pressure of my tablet machine. So overall, uh, there are some deliberate, purposeful, intentional changes you made uh, to the input variables uh, of your process or your system so that you observe and identify the reasons for those changes uh, that are observed in my output responses. Is it clear? Uh, what is an experiment and... Uh, why do we perform an experiment now let me start with uh, uh, this is uh, something which i usually start upon uh, whenever i start to give an overview about designing the experiment so we have a scientist who is interested in studying the effect of two synthetic process now one of my students is uh, trying to synthesize the derivatives of uh, kytosan or chitosan and we would like to have uh, an excipient that is chitosan uh, with a maximum potential of mucoadhesive strength. So what we can do, we can have a methylation of chitosan or thiolation of the chitosan. So which of these two process will give me a derivative which has a maximum mucoadhesive strength chitosan derivative? I hope, uh, is it the clear? What is my objective as an experimenter? My objective is to find out whether methylation gives me the maximum mucoadhesive strength or thiolation reaction uh, gives me the maximum mucoadhesive strength to my chitosan derivative. So what questions that should arise into the mind of scientist or into the mind of the chemist as we consider this very simple experiment. So first question that comes to my mind, are these only two processes of uh, the only process of potential interest? There can be much more other ways of uh, imbibing or incorporating mucoadhesiveness into my chitosan. So what are those? Have, have I done adequate literature search? That should be the first question in my mind. Are there any factors that would also affect the mucoadhesive strength that should be investigated or that should be controlled into this experiment? When you perform a methylation reaction for chitosan, you are performing it at the atmospheric condition or at the room temperature and we are doing thiolation and you do it at elevated temperature, you would find difference into the derivative of chitosan that has been prepared. So is it temperature that makes an impact? It is the ratio, molar ratio or a weight ratio of various reactant or the catalyst in its amount and the ratio will make an impact. So uh, I have to do a enough of literature review. I have to brainstorm among my team members to find out what all other factors that are also affecting the mucoadhesive strength uh, of my excipient. 
how many batches should I prepare for by each process? You will prepare one batch of methylation and one batch of thylation, and thereby you will come to the conclusion, no, uh, there has to be repetition and replication in my experiment uh, to uh, find out how much uh, precise are my results, how much accurate are my results. So repetition and replication is also an integral part of any experiment. Uh, how should we start assigning the treatment or assigning the process? In what order should we start? We should prepare the first, uh, in the first week, all three batches to be prepared by methylation and next three batches uh, in the next week to be prepared by thio thiolated ketosan. Is it the way? No, we should go for randomization uh, to avoid the biasness uh, into the experiment to have uh, uniform and even uh, chances of getting the process or a treatment to each of my ketosan sample uh, which I am going to treat. So randomization is also one of the uh, basic characteristic of an experiment. What method of data analysis should be used? You will have uh, a series of data of mucoidosis strength from uh, process one and uh, process two. How you are going to compare those data? Uh, are you going to do a student t-test, pair t-test? Are you going to have ANOVA? or you are going to have some other non-parametric uh, method of uh, hypothesis testing uh, that you are supposed to know. Uh, with just a difference of two unit in mucoidosis strength with methylated cetocin, will you conclude that methylation is the best process? So that you need to answer before the start of the experimentation or before you strategize any experiment. So if I look over to this, I, I would say uh, there would be a cetocin, there would be a methylated cetocin, there would be a thiolated cetocin. So, uh, I'm I, I am desiring to have a cetocin which should have a maximum uh, mucoadhesive strength and which I am going to exploit it for drug delivery by uh, various routes of administration. So uh, I am going to compare and there would be a control like uh, the cetocin uh, itself. Okay, there would be repetition and replication. There would be a randomization in the experiment and if required, uh, there would be different blocks being prepared. For example, if I am going to prepare six batches through methylation, uh, three batches can be uh, prepared into the morning shift and three batches can be prepared into the evening shift just to check out whether uh, the time or the duration or the time period does have any variation onto the my final outcome or not. So uh, when you will be designing the experiment, we need to assure and uh, we have to make very much sure that the basic characteristics of the experiments have been achieved or fulfilled. So when you design experiment, obviously you will achieve all these basic characteristics of the experiments. Now to start on uh, with designed experiment, there are some terminologies I'll take you on to a very fast because this is something you might have studied uh, on your graduation level. Uh, we have some factors which are in our hand, which we call which we are deliberately changing the input variables. Uh, which are into the hands of scientist or experimenter. We call it as independent variable that can be changed during the experiment. It may be a numeric or it may be a categorical as well. For example, uh, you change the time period of a reaction. You uh, you change <coughs> the time of stirring. Stirring was kept for 15 minutes, 30 minutes or one hour, whatever. You carried out your temp uh, drying at 50 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Celsius. You carried out a reaction at 25 degrees Celsius and 75 degrees Celsius. You carried out analytical HPLC analytical method at a room uh, at 25 degrees Celsius column temperature and 40 degrees Celsius column temperature. So those are numeric input variables. Uh, you may be using uh, the excipients obtained from XYZ vendor and PQR vendor. You may be compressing the tablet into uh, XYZ model make and PQR model make. So that is also something uh, the controllable or the input variable. So this is something which we call it as a qualitative or a categorical variable. Now, uh, there are some variables, uh, you know, which are going to make an impact on to my outcome variable, my response variable. Uh, for example, temperature keeps on changing where you are compressing your tablet. Okay, the humidity also gets on changing. Your project is like, uh, being extended or stretched throughout the year and your tablet machine has not been kept into the controlled uh, atmospheric condition. So humidity around the tablet machine may be different into winter, monsoon and the summer also. So uh, if you know uh, that those humidity and temperature are going to make an impact onto the flowability and compressibility, then you are supposed to perform uh, all the batches of experiment at a controlled condition. So you will have something uh, 
uh, which you call it as a controlled or uncontrolled factors that also have an impact on to your response variable. Uh, in an experiment, uh, the final outcome, the final output, the result, what you are measuring, we call it as a response variable, which may be again, uh, maybe a numeric as well as maybe a categorical as well. For example, I have, I have prepared a formulation and I want to test it. So someone will rate it as very bitter, someone will rate it as slightly bitter, someone will rate it as not bitter as at all. So uh, this is something also which can be categorical also. Uh, you may be measuring the percentage yield of the compound being synthesized, tensile strength, efficacy of a drug, percentage drug release, hardness, disintegration time and so on. So uh, broadly you have independent variable, dependent variable and some variables which you need to keep constant or being there. Now at the end, uh, what would be the designed experimentation? So designed experimentation would be a systematic series of tests in which uh, we are going to make deliberate and intentional changes uh, to our input factors. These are my input factors. Okay, so that I would be able to identify uh, what is the change that is happening over here in my response. Now we know uh, if you take the absorbance of a uh, analyte uh, in double beam UV spectrophotometer and you remove the covet from the instrument and again you measure the absorbance, is it going to show you the same absorbance? No, it is not going to show me the same absorbance. So what, uh, what would be there? There are some inherent noise into my instrument. Same way there are some inherent noise uh, from one analyst to the another analyst. There are some inherent noise because of our glasswares, because uh, of weighing and measuring as well. And that is also going to make an impact on my absorbance of the uh, analyte solution. So at the end, my Y is a function of X plus Z and there can be many X as well. So for example, let me take uh, a very simple example because 90% of the drug uh, are being uh, delivered into a tablet form or are being available right now into the tablet form. So uh, if I want to have the hardness of a tablet being measured, then hardness of a tablet would be a function of compression pressure. Hardness of a tablet would be a function of amount of binder being added into my tablet formula. Hardness of my tablet would also be a function of disintegrant being added into my tablet formula. Okay. And as well as uh, uh, it would also be a function of model and make of the equipment. Okay. Uh, it would also be a function of flowability and compressibility of the powder blend, what you are going to make uh, into a tablet. So uh, I want to first, when you design an experiment, you want to find out what are the most influenceable or what are the most critical factors that makes an impact on my response variable that you can find that out when you design the experiment. Okay. You can find out what is the level of my critical factors that will give me my desired nominal value of hardness or desired nominal value of disintegration time or percentage drug release after 30 minutes. Okay. Then you would also be finding out that uh, what is the best level of X or what is the best level of input variable so that I have a minimum variability in my response variable. So that also you can find it out through the design experimentation. You can also find it out where the most effect is of independent variable and the least effect we will get of the noise or you will try to eliminate or minimize the noise factor so that you could develop a model whereby y would be a function of x. So uh, this is something uh, we can do it using the design experimentation. Now, uh, so overall we are trying to investigate a very defined area uh, with a form objective to get our desired nominal value of our response. Uh, using appropriate tools and thereby we will draw a valid conclusions and which are obviously to be justified by the empirical evidence of the data that we are trying to obtain uh, through an experiment. So uh, in the design there would be a blueprint, there would be an arrangement of the runs in a design so that uh, something you uh, code it into a coded variable. Now another terminology that often comes that uh, by designing an experiment, we try to optimize a process, we try to optimize a product. Uh, if I would give you uh, a particular, for example, you want to uh, synthesize a chemical compound and you say that you want the optimum uh, compound to be synthesized. So I would say you want a compound uh, 
uh, which is having the highest yield. You want a compound which is as pure as possible. You want a compound which gets synthesized uh, in a very short period of a time. Okay. So uh, this is something your definition of an optimized compound which is being synthesized or if you would look out for oro dispersible tablet. Uh, you want a tablet which gets dispersed within 15 seconds of time. You want a tablet which gets dispersed with minimal quantity of the water. You want a tablet, uh, oro dispersible tablet, uh, which would be uh, uh, pleasant into the taste with good flavor and good taste as well. Okay. Now, uh, uh, this is something we call it as an optimum, uh, which is neither maximum nor minimum. But I would look into other perspective that... Uh, the product or the process will be optimized when you accomplish this objective. Now, what are those objective? High yield product, maximum purity product and being synthesized in a minimum period of a time or dispersible in the shortest period of a time with minimal quantity of a water and good into the taste. When I would achieve these my objectives, I have done my optimization. So uh, it is about implementing my systematic approach to achieve the best combination of product and process characteristic under a given set of condition. So at the end, uh, whenever uh, you hear, hear of a technology or something regarding optimize, it is about uh, to make it as functional as possible. It is about to make it as effective as possible and as perfect as possible. Then how do we start upon of planning the experiment to design. First and foremost thing is that begin with an end into the mind. You should know where you want to go. So recognize the problem and define the objective. I have to go to Chandigarh. I want to go to Delhi. I want to go to Mumbai. I want to achieve the percentage drug release of not less than 85 percentage in 15 minutes. I want to achieve a drug release of uh, not less than 80 percentage in 12 hours or whatever it is. So you define uh, the objective. Obviously, objective will you will define it based upon uh, the statement of problem uh, which you come across for your project. And then you select the response variables, uh, what you will be measuring. For example, you want to synthesize a, a compound which would be pure, as pure as possible and with good yield. So what you will be measuring, you will be measuring the percentage yield, you will be measuring the uh, impurity level into it, then uh, you know how you can get the maximum yield. So you will be varying the temperature of your reaction time. You will be varying the catalyst concentration. You will be varying the addition uh, rate of addition rate of the reactant into your reaction vessel. So this is something you start on working upon. And then you decide upon what type of design you need to choose. And then you perform the experiment and you analyze the data and then you conclude and recommendation. So the first uh, three, four points is something, four points is something about planning uh, that we will try to cover up in the next uh, 40 to 60 minutes. And then this is about the execution and this is about analysis and verification. And we'll start with the first step that is uh, planning or preparing for the design. Now, what information uh, must be gathered to build a good design experiment? Okay, so the main information that we want is about independent variables and the dependent variables. That is uh, variables and the response or what variables we often synonymously use, the, use it as a factors. And this is something called as a uh, response, the outcome of the experiment. Uh, any product or a process that has uh, manipulated input factors and very accurate, precise techniques of measurable outputs, that is response, you can improve those product and process utilizing the concept of design experiment. Uh, this is something has been very well proved in the past by many scientists across the world. How many runs you will require, how many experiments you will have to perform uh, to have a very productive, very effective and a very successful design experiment that would uh, we are going to talk about sizing the design that is sample size. Uh, what would be the power of the design and how it will help or ensure us uh, that you can go with two raised to power three with just eight runs or you can go with three raised to two uh, full factorial design with nine runs only, only or you need some additional runs to be repeated or not. What is most commonly used type of the design and how does it help to ensure our success? Now that would surely depend 
upon what objective you are trying to achieve uh, is your objective to screen out the factor to synthesize a gold nanoparticle is your objective uh, is to optimize the coating composition uh, to have uh, entry coating for your diclofenac tablet or ibuprofen tablet and so on so uh, design experiment concept will show us how to experiment efficiently and how to use statistics to ensure that the conclusions that will be uh, drawn are valid enough so begin with the first and the foremost is where we need to go uh, we should start planning about it we should start recognizing the problem you recognize the problem that a particular compound being synthesized uh, till now by so many synthetic process or by so many methods and still uh, the yield is not going above 60 percent the particular uh, dosage form or a particular drug delivery system uh, is successful but uh, it is very costly you want to minimize the cost by reducing the time period of its processing or by reducing uh, or by substituting some of the excipients which are very costly you want to minimize the processing time you want to maximize the tensile strength you want to maximize the drug release duration you want to maximize the entrapment efficiency of uh, any vesicular system whether it is liposome or neosomes or whatever so where do you ultimately want to end up identify the opportunity identify the problem and thereby you start defining your objective that is very very important to start upon when you want to design the experiment now for example uh, i want to achieve a certain level of percentage drug release from my dosage form i want to achieve a certain level of purity into my compound so i will have a purity for example not more than 50 ppm to be uh, impurity in my uh, chitosan derivative i want a disintegration time of <clears throat> not more than 10 minutes or something htp uh, in analytical method you will develop or into the tailing factor so uh, this is something uh, another aspect into it for example when i ask to student they they say that i want to prepare a sustain release tablet then we do generally ask them you want to prepare or formulate a sustain release matrix tablet but can you define it into terms of measurable response then he should be in a position to define it into a measurable response what should be the t 90 percent time required to release 90 percentage of the drug okay what should be the q6 hours what should be the quantity of the drug release you expect at the end of six hours at the end of 12 hours at the end of 24 hours so uh, this is something uh, i expect that you define your objectives into a measurable responses then after putting it into the quantitative way we are supposed to put it into a two different parts one of them we call it as a signal and one of them we call it as a noise now why uh, i am insisting to put it into two parts is that because this will help you for my next step about sizing the design that is how many runs you will require in your design experiment so uh, very briefly signal uh, signal is something uh, that will decide the power of your design signal is something that will help you to quantify your goal what you want to achieve that your goal would be t90 percentage would be 20 hours time required to release 90 percentage of the drug you want that not less than 20 hours for example that is the goal you want to achieve and you want to quantify so for that you need to define what would be the signal now signal is how much improvement you need into your product or a process characteristic into that extending the release duration up to how much so uh, what you would be uh, require over here is that if i change the concentration of my release retardant polymer from five percentage to ten percentage the release is decreased by 25 percentage okay by just changing five percentage of the polymer content in my formula the release was retarded to 25 percentage at the end of 10 hours so uh, this is something i call it as a signal okay uh, improvement of yield to 20 percentage if i change the catalyst concentration from one percentage to three percentage the yield of my compound synthesized went from 40 to 60 percentage so there is a 20 percentage increase in my yield so uh, this is something signal now signal is something uh, in another sense is uh, the change in the response value what you observe when you change the factor uh, so that is what you need to define it uh, before you start off the experiment uh, 
obviously you all will agree smaller is the signal harder you will find it to uh, achieve it and which in turn require more number of runs so when you say you just want to uh, change the drug release or retard the drug release by 2% 2% then you will have to go for more number of experimental runs in your design uh, then what is next is about noise into the system now if i perform the experiment using one percentage catalyst one time again one percentage catalyst and again one percentage catalyst so i am repeating the experiment three times uh, will you all expect that all the three times i will have the same yield of a compound which is being synthesized no sometime i may have 40 percentage sometime i may have 43 percentage sometime i may have 37 percentage so this variation of three percentage even though the synthesis was carried out at the same experimental condition or even the tablet formula was same compression pressure was same dissolution method was same i got release at the end of 10 hours was 60 percentage 62 and 58 percentage so this two percent is something we call it as an inherent noise into the system inherent into the process not caused by changing the factors that is something we call it as a noise and we must be in the knowledge of the noise of our system the noise of our product or a process before we start on designing the experiment so you had 10 percentage of the signal or 10 unit and you have noise of two unit so signal to noise ratio is quite handsome it is 10 by 2 that is 5 so you will require less number of samples or less number of runs to give a high power of your design so over here is something the very next step about sizing the design and any uh, any uh, any genuine software uh, which have been used or which have which are available into the market will ask you to input the value of signal and noise for each of your response what you are missing for your an experiment uh, if I am going on to a sustained release matrix tablet, I may have multiple response that I would be measuring. It may be a floating lag time, it may be a total floating time, it may be a percentage drug release at the end of 6 hours, at the end of 10 hours. So I am measuring multiple responses as well. And for all responses, uh, I should be in knowledge of signal and noise and which you will input into uh, the respective algorithm or the software to give the power of the design. Now, power is something which has its in relationship with sizing the design or sample number of the sample. It is probability of revealing or identifying the active effect of your factor. Uh, if the power is very high, the design will detect and identify the effect of polymer level on drug release, the effect of polymer level on mucoadhesive strength, the effect of polymer level on floating lag time of my formulation so on so uh, this is something very very important which we should plan it when we start designing the experiment as per the regulatory agencies and guidelines we are supposed to have at least 80 percentage of the power and uh, that would have the right size of an experiment design uh, which often we academicians fail to calculate the power of the design or we often fail to calculate the fraction of design space uh, for the experiment with enough number of runs to fall within range of 80 to 95 percentage power for all critical responses. I have been seeing so many papers and have been uh, evaluating so many dissertations where people are uh, optimizing or characterizing three to five factors with just 12 runs or 14 runs which statistically uh, is not at all recommended and not at all uh, it would go into a very successful or effective DOE. So for a very productive, very effective design of experiment, the power of the design has to be at least 80%. The next important factor is that I will try to connect it uh, with the different objectives which we have been discussing at the start of the session is uh, developing a oro dispersible tablet or developing a sustained release matrix tablet or synthesizing a compound which is of high purity and which, which is of a highest yield or developing uh, analytical uh, method with a minimum tailing factor and uh, desired nominal values of uh, HATP as well. So you will come to know that you want a certain HATP, you want to decrease uh, the tailing factor, you will manipulate uh, the column temperature, you will manipulate the mobile phase composition 
you will manipulate the amount of binder amount of disintegrant you will manipulate the amount of polymer to achieve the desired dispersion time or desired drug release time so uh, you based on your subject matter expertise you will be selecting the factors that is going to make maximum effect or impact on my response uh, if my uh, response is about uh, disintegration time or dispersion time for my oro dispersible tablet do you think that uh, the amount of lactose will affect the disintegration time or dispersion time of a mouth dissolving tablet no okay so uh, you are going to select only such factors that uh, will achieve your response and that are going to make an impact onto the response so that is also very very important when you start of planning of designing the experiment now next very important is about the level of uh, those factors so you decide that i am going to use super disintegrant now there are different types of super disintegrant you may use cross carmelo sodium uh, you may use sodium star glycolate you may use cross powder okay so you need to do a brainstorming among your team members with your supervisors with your colleagues uh, with your seniors okay you you could have your subject matter of expertise uh, with the formulation of oro dispersible tablet you will refer the published literature you will refer uh, to the catalog of the product which is available into the market or innovator product and thereby you will decide that okay i am going to use sodium starch glycolate now that has been previously used from 1% to 10% or from 1% to 5% that is the level of my factor that i am trying to make a sense over here so uh the rule of thumb says that it should neither be too broad and nor it should be too narrow as well okay something for example uh through the published literature i came to know that for baking a cookie i would require 10 minutes of time at 350 degree fahrenheit in my microwave oven now what would happen if i bake my cookie for 10 minute at 100 degree fahrenheit and 10 minute at 1000 degree fahrenheit at 100 degree fahrenheit in 10 minute i would get again maida and flour uh, maida or flour <coughs> at 1000 degree fahrenheit for 10 minutes i would get charcoal so the extreme uh, levels of my factor didn't give me a sensible product so i should not use such a, a very broad level of my factor okay now if i take uh, i prepare a product at 345 degree fahrenheit for 10 minute and 355 degree fahrenheit for 10 minute i would get a very similar cookie in the taste or into its hardness or into its friability so this is quite narrow uh, as well something so i should add something where by 300 to 400 degree fahrenheit uh, temperature what i should select so uh, this is something i obtained from the literature review then i had my own subject matter expertise that i should not go for such levels of a factor and even i discuss among my team members that what should be the level of my factor so till now uh, uh, i'll just recap of the initial planning of our experiment uh, first is defining the objective in terms of measurable responses calculate the signal to noise ratio which is needed for calculating the power or sizing the design uh, determine the difference that a minimum is important to detect for each response uh, i'll take it uh, if the time permit in bit detail regarding this uh, then selecting the input factors to study and set their labels input factors those factors which are going to achieve uh, my oro dispersible characteristic so it may be amount of super disintegrant it may be a compression pressure it may be amount of binder same way for compound to be synthesized it may be a temperature it may be a catalyst concentration it may be a molar ratio of different reactant or the addition rate of reactant and i'll set their label okay uh, the further apart the labels are being set uh, better will be generating a difference into the response if i if i select c345 and 355 so for both of them the response the response or the output variable for cookie baked at 345 and 355 is very similar so i am not able to distinguish uh, between it so this is something uh, which you need to take care of it so this is first a recap of the first initial 15 to 20 minutes now next is about coming back to the strategy of experimentation where we started initially that any experiment has to be uh, with comparison and controlled it has to be randomized it has to be repeated and replicated there should be a stratification and so on uh, that should also be a blinding into my experiment so that uh, whatever uh, results and conclusion are drawn are as valid as uh, 
uh, as valid and as accurate and precise as possible. Now, uh, consider your strategy of experiment at this stage is what are you doing? You want to screen out the factors which make an impact onto the gold nanoparticle what I am going to synthesize. Okay, so you know uh, the type of reducing agent, you know the concentration of reducing agent, you know the stirring rate, you know the stirring time. Okay, so uh, you may have different type of reducing agent right from gelatin, chitosan, trisodium citrate, uh, you may have uh, all different type of reducing agent that can be available for reducing the gold chloride into a gold nanoparticle or chlororic acid into a gold nanoparticle. You may have reducing agent and the gold chloride concentration ratio and molar ratio or weight ratio 1 is to 1, 0.1 molar to 1 molar or whatever it is. Okay, So you have n number of factors, some factors may be unknown also. So are you going to uh, uh, screen out some of the factors which significantly impact on characteristic of my gold nanoparticle, which may be its particle size, which may be its zeta potential and so on. Then you, <coughs> then you are supposed to select a screening design. If your target is to find out or to study the relationship between factors and response, okay, what would happen if I change the compression pressure on my hardness of my tablet? What would happen on disintegration time if I change the compression pressure of my uh, uh, compression pressure on my tablet machine? What would happen uh, to the tablet defect if I take the excipients, uh, different grades of excipients? So, uh, you want to characterize and you want to identify the relationship between the factors and response. You should take a characterization designs which are factorial designs which may be of two levels which you generally use it for characterization and at the end you want to optimize a, a product maybe oro dispersible tablet maybe a sustained release matrix tablet maybe you want to optimize a synthetic process you want to optimize the analytical method so uh, you need to select an optimization design now something over here into this particular flow chart and this is very well known and available in most of the doe books which you come across uh, in the entire world, they call it as a screening, characterization and optimization SCO strategy. So ideally, whenever a project is conceptualized, we do not know what all factors will make an impact onto my response or result variable. So first step is to screen out the uh, critical vital few factors. And then we are supposed to see the interactions and characterize those factors with the response. What would happen to hardness of my tablet? if I change my compression pressure of the uh, compression pressure on my tablet, which is to be compressed. So as I go on increasing the compression pressure, the hardness of the tablet increases. But after a certain extent, because of particle particle fracture, because of plasticity being exerted into it, because of uh, the compound uh, which is crystalline and now getting converted into amorphous because of so high compression pressure, the hardness of tablet may decrease. So I would say, uh, it would show a non-linear relationship that firstly the hardness increases as you increase the compression pressure and then the hardness decreases. So you, you came to uh, a new understanding that there are non-linear relationships that also exist between our factors and response and this is true in most of the pharmaceutical sciences research that we observe whether it is physical science, chemical science or biological science because we fall into all these three categories when you take up uh, any project for your Dissertation being there. So uh, when you want to when you want to uh, characterize it, we have something called as curvature. Now, how how did I make an inference that compression pressure has a non-linear relationship on my hardness of tablet? When I compress the tablet at 200 millipascal, 400 millipascal, and 600 millipascal, or it may be a 500 millipascal, 1000 millipascal, and 1500 millipascal. So when I studied a factor at more than two levels, at that point of a time only I would be able to realize whether there is a curvature or not. This is something I am talking about a curvature. So you study your factor at more than two levels. Okay, this is something in design experiment we call it as you include the center point batches in your two level design to identify whether curvature exists or does not exist. If curvature exists, we are supposed to go for the optimization designs like response surface methods, which may be a box bank design, central composite design or something. 
okay uh, some else like mixture design or optimal custom design and so on and then you need to verify that we will come to know now students do generally ask that why should we go and start from screening and characterization why can't we directly uh, apply central composite design or box bank and design or mixture design so uh, i would tell that based upon your subject matter expertise based upon an overdone kind of a subject where you already know that these are the two to four excipients or these are the two to four process related factors or formulation related factors which are going to make an impact on my entrapment efficiency on my particle size on drug release from the nanoparticulate system then you can start optimizing that product or a process with box mankan design or ccd or any three level design more than two level design okay so uh, 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 this is something uh, a design uh, that you need to choose upon based upon the objective you try to achieve so uh, broadly uh, you have factorial designs you have response surface designs and you have mixtures designs i will not go into this detail uh, factorial generally we try to apply factorial design to study the main effect and interaction effect only just to characterize the study and which are uh, by default in most of the algorithms being used are two levels you can include the center point batches a uh, response surface which builds up a quadratic and a polynomial higher order polynomial a uh, non linear for factor and response relationship 3 plus level and you may also have a mixture designs which are ideally suited for the formulation okay now uh, for screening uh, as we have discussed on to previous slides regarding the uh, sizing the design or sample size if we assume that interaction exist into the system i hope all those sitting over here please excuse me for uh bear me for giving you an example from just pharmaceutics and i know the students uh, are from the diverse uh, background or from different disciplines uh, being there but uh, as i increase the binder level the hardness of a tablet increases as well as dt also uh, increases uh, same way if i increase the disintegrant level in my tablet then the dt decreases as well as the hardness also decreases so when i increase my disintegrant concentration as well as when i increase the binder concentration there has to be some contradictory uh, impact on to my dt as well as on my hardness so uh, there can be a possible interaction into my system if i increase the catalyst and i also increase the temperature obviously the theory says that the yield of the compound should increase but what would happen your catalyst is getting degraded at a higher temperature you would find that the yield of the compound has decreased so there exists an interaction between the temperature and the amount of catalyst that you are using to synthesize your compound so uh, uh, whenever uh, based upon your subject matter expertise you know that there can be a interactions among the factors that i have been selecting so uh, please keep the main effect information very unbiased from the two factor interaction effect you are supposed to use a high resolution that is resolution 4 yellow designs and resolution 5 for a better design okay so uh, this is something being given into the design expert software the color coding for all different types of design and similar coding would also be there into the different uh, modules that are available into the market uh, for designing the experiment uh, resolution 3 are low resolution designs red designs plaquet berman or taguchi so where you are screening out 10 factors and 12 factors and you try to screen out them with just 10 runs or 12 runs it is not at all recommended uh, characterization you are supposed to use a design that can estimate all two factor interaction you can use full factorial design or resolution 5 plus consider that add, you will be adding the uh, center point batches to detect the non linearity for optimization we would be using ccd bbd or optimal custom design and for formulation it is always advisable that we use mixture design even mixture design is available for screening also and it is available for characterization also and it is available for optimization also so uh, this is something uh, a brief about uh, sco uh, now which design we should use out of this will depend upon your objective as i said your objective is to optimize a product or a process your objective is to screen out the factors for a particular process your objective is to characterize and identify the relationship that exists between the factor and response so accordingly you will select any of the design from screening characterization or optimization but please get yourself reminder that you should use a design which has an option of adding a center point which which has an option of 
creating a blocks in your design. For example, there are 16 runs and you want to make uh, two blocks of eight runs differently. Eight runs will be done by student uh, A and another eight runs will be performed by student B. So I'll come to know what is the variation that exists uh, when the analyst change or when the formulation scientist changes. Uh, the design that allows you for applicates we should select. Uh, all of those designs being selected should allow you to calculate the power of the design. Uh, all those design runs should be provided in a random run order. You should be selecting a design or any algorithm which is very user friendly to add on your response data directly copy paste to excel whenever it is desired please remember have been bolded into the red font that most of the design of experiment analysis problems are caused by errors made in building the designs okay i have seen the people uh, optimizing five factors with just 16 runs or 12 runs so sizing of the design fails over there the power of the design would be very very low and when there is no power of the design how are they going to identify the effect of different factors that they have undertaken to study on the different responses what they have measured okay so doa analysis starts with a proper planning of building the design now next is that once you have built up the right design you will start executing your experiment and you will start measuring the responses so how do you measure the responses we first of all we should select uh measuring the responses for which you have a very accurate and a very precise techniques being available for example there are very raw and crude method available to determine the mucoidosis strength of a gel what i have prepared okay there there are even very crude and raw method in vitro method being available uh, to determine the antioxidant activity of a particular formulation let it be uh, 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 any cosmetic preparation you want to claim for its anti-aging property or antioxidant property okay so firstly ensure yourself uh, to have a very accurate results uh, through a very precise and accurate techniques of the response that you are going to measure what is preferred is the the data what you have been collecting should be quantitative on a continuous numeric uh, level that should be the best one if you are collecting the qualitative data as i said how is the taste of my formulation so you will rate right from 1 to 10 how is the feedback of this particular webinar so you will rate from 1 to 5 whether it was average or whether it was excellent so uh, that experimental data should span the full range sometimes uh, for example uh, you have vials sorry you have ampules being checked for the particulate content uh, or clarity taste okay so pass or fail okay you have some scores or something so that may be a binomial response so that would require 75 to 100 runs to do the model fitting okay so this is something uh, which is best way to measure the response okay uh, as i said on the previous slide you need to quantify your objective into a measurable responses and that quantification should always be on a continuous and a numeric basis uh, the designed experimental result should span the full range of good product to a bad product then and then only we would be able to create a very strong predictive model okay so please keep it into mind when you start executing your uh, build up design when you have already built up your design into the right way the execution also has to be into the right way uh, to achieve our goal uh, again when you start execution you just have a glance through how many runs being needed it should be as high as 80 percentage 80 to 95 percentage signal to noise ratio is something being calculated uh, through the power of the design in factorial design in most of the algorithm uh, what the people have been using 80 percentage is something which is higher uh, when you use uh, optimization designs sorry response surface methodology or mixture design uh, we are supposed to input the value of the signal as well as noise and that would give you the fraction of design pace 80 percentage or uh, greater okay uh, this is just uh, beyond the scope of uh, the time limit that we have uh, otherwise i would have uh, taken another complete session on sizing the design now next is that when you have complete eight runs or nine runs or 16 runs how you should start executing them run order matters most and run order should be in a randomized way that is something the best way the statistics says us or statistics suggest us 
because it protects us against the external variables that inadvertently would be biasing or giving the biasness in the factor effect. And if at all uh, we are not able to randomize, then we should use a very proper tool available into various software and various algorithm to restrict the randomization. You may feel that how can I change the pore size of my column? You can, may feel that how can I change the particle size of packing of my column? So you have one factor which is very hard to change. Okay, you may think that how can I vary a temperature very often for all my 16 runs in some run it is 50 degree in some run it is 150 degree in some run it is 1000 degree Celsius. So you, you would be selecting a design where we call it a split plot design, uh, which most of uh, the software and they do offer is that you will label your factor as hard to change and easy to change. So you will label them as hard to change. So the randomization of that factors will be restricted. Same way, uh, if you want to, if you assume that there are some potential variations that exist when I prepare a batch in morning shift and when I prepare a batch in uh, night shift. So if you have 16 runs, you should have eight runs to be prepared in uh, morning shift and eight runs to be prepared or synthesized into the night shift. You uh, study the variation between both of them. If there are no significant variation being observed, means the shift is not a potential source of variation. So uh, that how could I do when I uh, made two blocks of my 16 runs, I can make four blocks of my 16 runs into four, four, four and so on. So uh, run order matters a lot and uh, most and it has to be in a random way. Uh, the very next important parameter uh, as we go on trying to complete this particular circle is about analysis of the data uh, that we have. So uh, we will be including only those terms which are statistically significant. Okay, I will not go into uh, detailed inferential statistics or hypothesis testing, uh, but I hope that uh, it would be a kind of a prerequisite when you are attending this particular session. So include where the P is less than 0.05, okay? Uh, or else you should include only those terms which are required to maintain the model hierarchy. For example, you came that interaction between A and B, AB uh, is showing P value of less than 0.05. So AB is a significant term, but at the same time for an hierarchy, you should include term A also in your model and term B also in your model because AB is a significant. Let A has p value of more than 0 0.05 and let b also has a p value of more than 0 0.05 we are supposed to include them into the model okay uh, rest of the terms which has more than 0 0.05 p value it will be pulled together uh, by the respective algorithm and the software to estimate uh, it as a residual of the system or error of the system so uh, uh, we have been generating for three level and more than three level a quadratic model, a polynomial model, uh, which you might have studied somewhere else as a regression analysis is used to create the model graph. It will be helpful for predicting the future results, forecasting the result, and it will also help you to optimize the product or a process. If you have selected, if you have built up the wrong design, the story is finished over there. If you have selected the wrong model, everything will be wrong in optimization, in predicting the future results or even creating the model graph. So this particular point is something which we need to take uh, on utmost priority and we have to be very, very careful. So model selection is something which is most, most important. Sometimes you uh, people do ask model means it is a, a kind of a mathematical model. What we have been talking, y is a function of a x. So hardness of a tablet is a function of compression pressure, amount of binder and amount of disintegrant. The yield of a compound being synthesized is a function of catalyst concentration, temperature, pressure, condition at which the compound was being synthesized. So this is a model what we are trying to uh, connect with you all. For example, a simple uh, linear regression model is a y is equal to mx plus c. What you have been plotting, for example, lambert beer plot, Okay, whereby you say absorbance is a function of concentration of analyte. So uh, the same way uh, we would have the model being generated into our experimental design. Now, uh, this is something where we acknowledge as we have taken the screenshots uh, from the design expert software. 
uh, this are the screenshots when you start on clicking the analyzing the data after you have executed your experiment and you have entered the value of response variables in your uh, design uh, matrix so uh, once you will click onto the configure by default you need to keep it no transformation i'll come back to it what is the transformation and all about the data so first thing will be effects so uh, we uh, we have to use half normal plot to select the effect to include into the model and then you will be leaving uh, or the remaining to be pulled together for the residuals ANOVA tab will help you to examine the analysis of variance and summary statistics. This will give you the residual diagnostic and then the final tab to generate your model graph. We'll go try to cover them as fast as possible. So uh, for example, uh, this is something a half normal plot uh, uh, looks like upon. So you will be selecting all those points which are away uh, from this red line and with just uh, are lined up over here have been pulled off together as a residual or as a non-significant factors. Again, there would be a coding onto it. If you increase the catalyst level, there is a positive effect onto the yield. If you change the atmospheric uh, uh, nitrogen to atmospheric condition, the yield goes on decreasing. So uh, these are some of the effect plot uh, that will help you to build up your model. Okay. Over selection will lead to incorrect value, incorrect p-value. If you select this particular terminology also, if you select this particular factor also, it is going to uh, spoil your entire model which is being selected over here. You can see over here p-value is more than 0 0.05. Uh, Shapiro Wilcock uh, test is being done for the normality of the data. Uh, we have an assumption into the ANOVA that the data should be normally be distributed. So normality test is generally an inbuilt test being available in most of the algorithms and the software available for designing the experiment. Now, how it happens uh, into uh, the model selection in response surface methodology, uh, you would find uh, another two different tabs being available instead of effects and ANOVA over here. Uh, you will have fit summary in model. Okay, so uh, the inbuilt software, the inbuilt algorithm will give you a comparative statistics on different polynomial models and suggested model will be highlighted by all of the algorithm that uh, you would be using for designing the experiment and it will be default onto the screen. So it may be a two factor interaction, it may be a mean model, it may be a quadratic model. So uh, that accordingly uh, you will be selecting uh, keep it auto select for model reduction as well. Then there will be ANOVA and then there will be a residual. We will go to the end. Now, uh, this is how something uh, the model would look like. It was the quadratic model uh, for synthesizing a particular protein. You see P value uh, being less than 0 0.05 being there. Now over here, AC has been there. Uh, into my model being the significant. So I have also included C being p-value more than 0 0.05 to maintain the hierarchy of the equation. Lack of fit is something which should always be uh, non-significant, okay? So which is desirable for us. So all the term p-value should be less than 0 0.05 and lack of fit p-value should be more than 0 0.05. Whenever you are analyzing the data, please focus on them. Now, this was something here, uh, 0.90 and 0.86 adjusted and predicted R square uh, should be within the difference of 0.2 unit and over here it is within 0 0.04 unit. So this is something you have to look for whenever you are analyzing uh, the data. Then only your model would be very predictive. Do not over interpret the statistics when you will go on analyzing uh, the data for preparation of the design or uh, something a key to a successful and effective and productive design is that a significant model with large f value with p of 0 0.05 non significant lack of fit with more than p more than 0.1 and adequate precision of more than 4 and that difference uh, should be within point to adjusted and predicted r square well behaved residuals and interpreting the model graph i'll take on to the next slide so this is something uh, regarding developing a good model now uh, what we would say over here is that uh, whatever data experimental we observe that also includes uh, the signal and also it includes the noise into it okay so we through analysis we are trying to filter out the signal and uh, we are trying to find out 
signal plus noise minus signal so we will try to find out what is the noise into the system now we are here uh, to make that there should be no signal remaining into the residuals that is no visible pattern should be available now earlier we have seen a uh, half normal plot for the effect where we have selected those which were away from the line so uh, this is something normal plot of residuals that we observe generally uh, into different uh, research papers that have been published on to the design of experiment everything should be onto the line means it is a well behaved residuals okay so in residuals uh, there are no signals being there so this is a good news a green signal for us to move forward for a predictive model no particular pattern will be observed onto the residuals versus predicted i hope uh, just to make a more clarification onto the residuals is something uh, <clears throat> i have prepared a tablet at a certain experimental condition and whose hardness was 5.5 okay now i'll replace uh, the respective input variables on my model okay i'll put so and so compression pressure i will put so and so uh, hard i will put so and so disintegrant i will put so and so binder level uh, then i got into through that particular equation of x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on i got the hardness uh, through a mathematical equation is 6.1 so actual was 5.1 predicted is 6.1 so the difference between both of them is something we call it as a residual okay so we want to develop a model which predicts the value for my response which is as close to the as close to the observed value or the actual value so it is expected that residual should be as minimum as possible so no particular pattern is observed when you click on to the residual analysis this is something of good news and green signal for us box box plot we will be using it whether to say whether data are normally distributed no residual are being normally distributed or not so it is suggesting that transformation is none and it is a green line uh, this is something uh, the user interface or the data interpretation as you would be doing it and to the design expert so transformation is not required otherwise it will suggest you that you transform your data onto natural log into log based log based <coughs> log base to 10 you may take inverse of the data you may do square root of the data and then again it does the normality test to check whether data are normally distributed or not this is something we call it as a transformation of a data no points are out of the bond and no trend again a good news and a green signal to move ahead for the predictive model okay so uh, once uh, we have been com we complete the assumptions of all our hypothesis testing we do the residual analysis the next very important preparation in planning the productive doe is that reminder remember what were your original objectives of the experiment okay or your original objective was to achieve the high yield your original objective was to achieve uh, not less than 80 percent is released at the end of 20 hour your original objective was the uh, minimum impurity not more than 5 ppm or 50 ppm of impurity remember those objective and then start reviewing the model graph which factors are not significantly uh, statistically significant uh, affecting on my different responses how is this information important for my project or for my objective what all new process understanding will i get from the model graph and then after reviewing my model graph i'll go on to my numerical optimization to change the limit to reflect the innovator specification to customer specification or regulator specification and then uh, if i am getting many results then the process or the product what i have developed is so pro, uh, so robust and i can tighten the limit to focus more on my optimal area i'll just try to show you now this is something a graph that i have obtained uh this is we call it as an interaction plot am i audible mansi madam can someone please yes sir it is okay, okay. Yes, sir, you are okay. Fine, fine, audible. fine yeah yeah uh, I, I request all the participants to put up their questions into the chat box and we will surely address at the end of the session uh, we have catalyst concentration ranging starts from 1% to 2% and the yield of the compound being synthesized from 40 to 80% and these are the two lines for low temperature and a high temperature. So at a low temperature catalyst is increasing the yield up to from around 48 to around 52 
but at high temperature catalyst is giving you the yield from 58 to around 88 percentage so these two lines are not parallel to each other indicating there is an interaction between my catalyst and the temperature on my yield of a compound being synthesized so for high yield i will have a catalyst of a high concentration okay temperature of a high concentration i'll be going to use nitrogen condition rather than the atmospheric that is an inert condition and expected yield i am going to get a 90 percent you can see over here so uh, 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 this is something an insight what i have to do from interpretation of the data from various model graph this is an interaction uh, graph uh, interaction plot being there you see uh, this is catalyst 48 to 52 this is nitrogen this is atmosphere uh, being there temperature 140 and 180 and these all points are being uh, written is of yield so uh, this is something an insight what we are supposed to do when i'm looking for interpretation of the data for example i am synthesizing a protein now what do you see over here i'm going to make a, a, a brief overview of the interpretation of counter plots uh, i have uh, heating that is temperature 70 to 80 degree and pH from 5 to 7, these contour lines show you the response variable values. So at this condition, at this entire condition, you will get 70 percentage protein uh, being after purification and this 80 and this will be more than 80. Fine. So if I put a cursor over here, that is I have an experimental condition of 72 hitting uh, 72 degree Celsius for 30 minutes and pH of around 6.3, I'm going to get 80 percentage pure protein. At the same time, if I do it over here at 76 and also at 5.25, I'm also going to get 80. So this is how the interpretation of the data goes on. Now, here is an area in my design space that will give you my maximum response. So maximum response is something more than 80. OK, so optimization will give me many solutions, not just one solution. So what does I mean? Uh, what does it mean that when I say many solutions? So over here also, I'm getting more than 80 and over here also I am getting more than 80. Over here also I am getting more than 80. Over here also I am getting more than 80. So this is something uh, we call it as many solutions uh, which optimization will uh, give me. Done. Now uh, next I will try upon after interpreting the model graph I will go on to the numerical optimization. Uh, as you can see, again, a user interface uh, being taken uh, from one of the software uh, design experts. So once we, these are the criteria. So over here, you see all independent variable and dependent variable. So dependent variable is only percentage protein purification. OK, and these are all my independent variables. So I have just put on that protein purification. The goal is to maximize. I want maximum purification of my protein or maximum yield, whatever you can say. And limit I had kept to. 60 to 80 so you can see the ramp goes on uh, like this okay and once you click it it will give you the predicted result now you go in your laboratory do the heating for 74 degrees celsius uh, for 30 minutes ph 5.0 redox potential of 0.232 sodium oxalate 0.025 molar sodium lauryl sulfate 2.1 percentage you are going to get a uh, protein purification of 80 percentage okay so numerical optimization will help me to search the design space for areas that will meet my criteria as I set. OK, so this is also something uh, you should look out for a very productive and a very effective uh, design of experiment. So uh, this is something which you can look out for by looking out into it. See, this was the entire region of operability entire region of operability for example for heating it was 70 to 80 ph 5 to 7 this was this so that was this entire region i want to reach to this region of interest and then finally i will be reaching over here to the sweet spot uh, that is the final successful or a productive doe i would say so next is about i am we are trying to hit this sweet spot over here onto the peak of my flag okay so next is about verification confirmation of the runs so after interpreting the model graph, uh, using our subject matter expertise and using our subject matter knowledge and trade-off between various variables, uh, we will try to uh, uh, focus on or we'll try to hit on to the sweet spot in our uh, design space as well as in our numerical uh, optimization. Uh, we will now start verifying the result. Is the prediction working properly and adequately or not? So how do we do it? 
uh, this is also being available in most of the algorithms and the software, but so user friendly in design expert based on my experience and which I have been training uh, many people across the India and have been using it for academic research purpose as well. Uh, use confirmation mode, uh, which you can see right uh, onto the uh, tab menu over here, the active pan. Okay. So uh, if the mean is within the adjusted prediction interval, then model has been confirmed. Okay. Run a small experiment around the optimal setting. Treat the optimal setting as the center point and pick a small range of each factor. For example, let us assume that these are all optimal settings. Okay. There are five independent variables, redox potential, sodium exolate, sodium lauryl sulfate, heating and pH. So these are my optimal setting, okay, which is giving me uh, 80 percentage protein uh, yield or protein purified. Okay. Uh, why I uh, have claimed them as optimal setting because it is giving me the desired nominal values of protein percentage. Okay. So this is my option. So now what I am trying to suggest is that you take a point something over here, you point to take something point here, you point to take something here. So you will take 72, 76, you will take 5.1 and you will take 4.9, you will take 0 0.023, 0 0.027, you will take 0 0.07 and you will take 0 0.13 or something like that. Okay, and that is how uh, you take a small range of each factor around that optimal setting and you compare what is the prediction at that center point in the new experiment calculated by previous analysis. So uh, that will help you uh, to get some sensitivity analysis in addition to the confirming the previous model. Now you see what we have done over here. Can you see what I have done? What is here? 74.37 heating. So what I have done? 71, 6.4, redox potential 0.16, sodium oxalate 0 0.025. This I have kept to 0.1. Okay. Run number 5. So 80, 83, 77, 76.5 and 83. Okay. And then confidence interval I put upon how many runs or how many times uh, the runs have been completed? Five times. So I am going to get the predicted mean, predicted median and which is within the 95% uh, confidence interval level. So uh, this helps me to confirm my optimal setting. So to confirm the data mean is within 95% interval, uh, it is very, very essential uh, to end up our productive and a successful design. Okay. So before I take on to your questions, let us have a fast recap and flashback of our entire uh, previous 50 minutes. So uh, first we should begin with an end into the mind. We should know what is our goal, what is our objective, what type of data you want. Uh, the objective will also determine the type of DOE being needed. Are you doing a project for screening out the factors? Are you doing a project to establish a relationship between factors and responses? Uh, where you want to characterize certain factors to study interaction between factors or main effect of a factor. Uh, whatever response you are trying to measure, please try to ensure that those responses are on continuous and numeric scale as well as being measured by a very accurate and a precise technique, not by something raw method or a crude method which shows a lot of variation into the response variable that you measure. Always ensure to measure the power or the precision of the design to confirm that the total number of the runs are adequate enough for a very predictive model. You are supposed to run the design uh, in a very random order or change the design to accommodate any kind of restrictions if you have that it is a, something a factor is there which is very hard to change. Uh, a flashback for analyzing the results. We are only supposed to select those terms which are significant P less than 0 0.05. Okay. And if it is uh, coming into the hierarchy, we should select them and the, uh, the other rem remaining will be there into the residuals. Okay. Don't over interpret the model. Check for the regular behaviors, uh, irregularities. Uh, for example, I'll just go back to my slides. Uh, these are regular uh, something, no abnormalities or no irregularities, all are on the plane. Wherever I have written into the green font, uh, green signal, something uh, which is into the uh, range. Okay. So uh, that has to be checked down for the analysis. Uh, model graph in combination with optimization tool, as we have seen, uh, 
we see more than one solution for the optimum model graph we have interpreted and followed by numerical optimization uh, to tell the objectivity, to tell the entire story of our project and data and uh, go back and uh, to the process and complete the confirmation runs to verify that results are very real. Okay. So at the end, uh, the study consideration should be what is the objective of study, state the objective in terms of measured responses, how the responses will be measured, how you will measure the drug release, how you will measure the disintegration time. For example, oro dispersible tablet, you have n number of methods available to measure the disintegration time. One is pharmacopoeial method being available. One, you may be taking it into the petri dish, you may be doing the wetting time, you may be uh, doing hell lot of methods are available. Someone is taking 2 ml of uh, media, someone is taking 5 ml of media for with agitation, without agitation and so on. Someone is taking filter paper into uh, the petri dish and measuring what would be the wetting time and so on. What is the precision being required? Sizing of the design. What factors you will study? Region of interest and operability and how is the model and what design we should use. Okay. Uh, I would conclude by saying that uh, no alphabetic optimality uh, or any sophisticated statistical analysis can make up for studying the wrong problem, for measuring the wrong response or not having the adequate precision or for studying the wrong factors. Okay, you are taking, you are adding super disintegrant and you are trying to uh, retard the drug release. You are something studying a very wrong factor out of it. Okay, or you have too many runs which are outside the region of operability. Then uh, no uh, theory, no practical or no software or algorithm uh, will help you to do your uh, analysis. So something to, uh, to this about. So once again at the outset, I am thankful to the LM College of Pharmacy, Principal M.T. Chabaria sir, as well as Principal Gupta sir of ISF College of Pharmacy to start on the dialogue series between uh, the two prestigious institutions of India. And I also acknowledge uh, to the design expert from whom I have taken some of the screenshots of uh, to illustrate and to create awareness among the academicians and especially among the students so that they can effectively plan their experiment and thereby design it uh, into a very uh, productive output or into a very successful. So these were uh, some of the major keys uh, that over a period of a time uh, I have analyzed uh, in my experience. So once again, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I would be happy to answer any of your queries. Any questions from students? Uh, sir, I have one question. Can I? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, madam, you may please ask. Hello. Yes, Hello. you are audible, madam. Yes, sir. So, sir, I was asking that when uh, you showed that we should confirm the results or that we should confirm the runs with the optimized settings. So, is yes. that the same uh, that as that of checkpoint analysis? Yes, it is similar to checkpoint analysis only. Yes. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what we are trying to see is... Uh, you are supposed to take the points surrounding your optimal settings. Okay. Okay. And for example, your optimal setting over here in the example, what I had shown you was yes. uh, 80 percentage protein. Yes, so when sir. you take, when you take points around the optimal setting of four independent variables, so you should get the result of those four to five batches in the 95 percentage confidence interval of 80 percent yes, yes so sir. so that is how we are confirming the runs and thereby the entire uh, statistical analysis uh, gets completed okay sir okay thank you sir thank you dr ketan for this wonderful lecture and i also want to convey my thanks to all participants who joined and enjoy this lecture
I hope this lecture will be available on YouTube on ISFCP official website. So if any query, you can also put your question on ISF YouTube channel and social media. Again, thanks to Dr. Ketan and Dr. Mansi from LM College of Pharmacy for their great effort and contribution in the field of pharmaceutical sciences. And as a regard, so this is the certificate, e certificate that we mentioned to you. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.